In this tutorial we import the vectors that you see on screen from a DXF file. We then change the work area to match the uh, material size that we're going to be using to cut this out. We also demonstrate ways of accurately then realigning the actual XY0 to the center of this circle. We then go ahead and create the various pocketing toolpaths and profiling toolpaths and make good use of the preview toolpath form to make sure that everything that we're doing turns out exactly how we want it and also to prevent tool breakages. So let's start by opening a copy of the software and for this we want to import a DXF file of the comrod that we want to toolpath. So there's two ways we can do this. If we've got the folder open with the DXF file in it we can simply drag and drop that into this area uh, of the software or we can come to open an existing file, locate the folder and just click on it and press the open button. Now for this job we're going to be working in millimetres so I can see that it's currently set to inches so I'm just going to change that to millimetres there and then I'm just going to make a few alterations to the size of our job. So I'm just going to change the width to 125 millimetres and I'm going to change the height to 60 millimetres. The thickness of our material is going to be 12 millimetres and we're going to set the Z0 off the top of the block. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to accept the rest of the changes and press OK. What I want to do is I want to center the vectors that we've imported into the center of what is going to be our material block. So simply press Ctrl A on the keyboard that will select all the vectors on the screen and then we can go to Transform Objects and Align Selected Objects and we can press this button here to center to the center of our work area or we can use the shortcut of F9 on the keyboard. So once we've done that we can just click close on this form and we can click in the white space to so deselect all the vectors. Since centering all our vectors to the center of our new workspace we've now lost where the X0, Y0 was and we need that to be in the center of this circle. We may need to do this for various reasons. It may be the fact that the material that we use to uh, cut out the part may have been prepared in, in a certain way that the part that we want to cut on it needs to be positioned perfectly. So we may use the center of this circle as an anchor point. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the distance that we need to, to move this x0, y0 by to get that uh, perfectly in the center of this circle here. So we know that this rectangle was perfectly in the bottom left hand corner here but now since centering it it has moved. So one thing we can do is we could use for instance say the polyline tool and we could snap to the bottom left corner here and then click and then simply snap to the point there so we can when we get this icon that you can see on screen uh, that means it's going to snap to the corner of this rectangle and if we just look up here where it says DX and DY we should see the value that it's moved in X and Y. So you can see that it's moved in X4 and Y4 as well. So if we simply just right click our mouse we'll come straight out of that tool and we can then go back into the set job dimensions and origin and we can then change this offset value here and we just need to add 4 onto this so we will change this to minus 20 in X and minus 30 in Y and that should take us back to the center of our circle like so. So when we've done that we can press OK and we can then proceed uh, to the toolpaths. So we can do this by clicking this option here or we can click F12 on the keyboard. So the first toolpath that we're going to be concentrating on is with this vector here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pocket out some material and in essence what we're going to be doing this for is it's to lighten the weight of the comrod and I want to do this with a ball nose tool because I want to have nice radius edges all around the vector. So now we've got this selected if we come over to the pocket toolpath operations and just click on that we can start by specifying our start depth so we know that we want to do it from the top of the material so we'll start off with 0, 0 and I'm going to cut out 4 millimeters of depth of material so just specify 4 in there 
Now for this toolpath we're only going to be using the basic options so we can untick the show advanced toolpath options there. We will be covering the more advanced options in other tutorials so don't worry too much about that at the moment. So first of all let's start off by selecting the tool that we want to use. So if I go to the select button here under the tool options and then because we're using millimeters we need to come to the metric tool options and I just want to expand the ball nose section there. I want to use a 6mm ball nose. I'm not going to edit any uh, settings in here, I just want to press OK because then I'm going to use the edit option here so I can edit the tool specifically for this toolpath. So I can see to start with that the step over that we have of 10% at the moment is a little small so I'm just going to increase that to 1.5mm so around 25% I'm going to specify some speeds now which are going to be for cutting free machining aluminium so I'm going to set the spindle speed to 3000 and I'm going to set the feed rate to 3 millimeters a second and a plunge rate of 1 mil a second and then when I've got all those I'm going to click OK for that For clearing the pocket I'm going to use a rastering strategy so it's just going to go from side to side and I'm going to also include a ramp so I'm going to ramp in with a 16mm distance so just specify 16 in there and then we can give this a name so I'm going to call this lightening pocket just so that when obviously we're reading all the toolpath names it actually means something to us so as this pocket's sole purpose is purely for uh, lightening the weight of the comrade uh, we're just going to call that lightening pocket so once we've done that we can click calculate and it will then process that as you can see the software has brought us straight into the preview toolpath form so this then allows us to then preview uh, the toolpath that we've now created so that we can actually, actually visually see if it's what the effect that we wanted to achieve so first of all I'm just going to change the material as we are going to be using uh, metal so I'm just going to be going down this drop down here I'm going to select say uh, steel bright for the material colour and I'm going to use a global fill colour so that means any toolpaths that are going to be cutting away any of the material from the top of the surface is going to be coloured this colour so I'm just going to select a dark grey for this and what we can do now is we can simply just preview that toolpath So as you can see, we've got a nice radius edge on there. If I just swivel that round a bit, you can see it's gone in about 4mm. And also you can tell that we've used the ball nose because we've got these lines that are, that are present after it's cut. And that's standard with any ball nose tool unless you use a very, very small step over. So I'm happy with that. So we can now move on to the next tool path. So I'm going to go to the 2D view and I'm going to deselect the vector that we've got set currently and I'm now going to select the outer rings for our comrade so I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and then select this one here and then I'm also going to then hold shift and select the outer box here as what I want to do next is I want to create another pocket that pockets down the material between these two circles leaving these uh, circles raised 2 mil above the rest of the material so let's close the preview toolpath form and let's go back into the pocketing toolpath operation. Now again our start depth is going to be from the top of the block, so 0, 0 and I'm going to specify a cut depth of 2 millimeters. This time I want to use a 6 mil end mill so I'm going to go into the tool database and I go down to our metric tools I'm going to expand the end mills and I'm going to select the 6mm ml. So I'm just going to select all the standard speeds and feeds and press OK and then again I'm going to use the edit option to edit this tool uh, for this particular toolpath and toolpath that I may use uh, during this job. So the path steps I'm going to leave the same. I'm going to change the step over to around 20% so 1.2mm. I'm going to change the spindle speed 
to 3000 RPM and I'm going to change the feed rate to 5 mil a second and the plunge rate again of 1 mil and then press OK. This time I'm not going to use a rastering strategy, I'm going to use an offset strategy. So I'm going to click this option here. I am again going to use uh, a ramp plunge, so and I'm going to keep that at 16 mil, and I'm just going to give this a name of just simply pocket, and then I'm going to click calculate. So as you can see in the 3D view, that's overlaid the toolpath. So again, we can now simply just preview that again. So just do that for you now. So I can see by looking at the toolpath preview that that is exactly what I expected it to do. So now I'm happy that that's going to machine correctly. We can now move on to the next toolpaths. So I'm going to go to the 2D view and then again I'm going to deselect in the white space. And for our next toolpaths we're going to be doing the holes for our comrade. So simply select the inner circles. So select one, hold shift on the keyboard, then select the other. Just close the preview toolpath form and then come over to the pocket toolpath again. We want to start depth of zero zero as we are still going to be machining from the top of the block and we want to cut the full depth. So that's 12 mil but you can also use the shortcut of just Z and then pressing the equals key on the keyboard. Next we're going to choose our tool so we want to use a 6 mil end mil so rather than selecting it from the database I can simply select the edit button and it should bring through all the edited uh, parameters that we specified in a previous toolpath. I can just verify that and click OK. For the holes I'm going to use an offset pocketing strategy so make sure that that's selected and again we can then use a ramp so I'm just going to make sure that that says 16 and it's checked I'm just going to change the name to this to pocketing holes and click calculate as you can see that's again drawn it on the 3D view so we can just simply preview the selected toolpath If we do feel that it's taking too much time to actually draw the preview on screen, we can simply just untick these options here to animate the preview and the draw tool so that it will just simulate that a lot faster for you. We could have also achieved the same result as pocketing these holes as we could have done simply just profiling on the inside of those circles that we selected as we are actually uh, cutting through the whole of the material so we would have just been left with uh, some waste material from the center of each of these circles. So as I can see from the preview that I'm happy with that, I can simply go back to the 2D view and we can now specify our final cutout. So again I'm just going to click in the white space to deselect the items that I've currently got and then I'm going to select the outside vector of our comrade. I'm going to close the preview toolpath form here and then I'm going to go to the toolpath operations and I'm going to select the profile toolpath. For the start depth we may be thinking that we might be able to use uh, 2 mil, as as we know that we have pocketed down in between this material uh, by 2 millimeters. but in actual fact our tool may actually come into contact with this outer wall here. So we could actually go to the drawing tab and just quickly, again we could just use the polyline tool just to measure that. So we could just snap to a point there and go up and if you read the DY you'll see that there's 4 mil when in actual fact our tool is 6 mil wide so you'll see that it is going to hit that outer edge so if I just right click the mouse again just to get rid of that and then I'm going to go back over to the tool pass so I'm just going to hide this option there so we're going to keep the start depth at 0 0 and we're going to specify a cut depth as the total amount so that's going to be Z equals and as we know that's going to be 12 mil Let's select the tool, so I'm going to select uh, 6 mil end mil for this. And I'm just going to again edit the parameters. The reason why it's all reset is because we're using a different type of uh, toolpath. So as we've not actually used 
uh, a profile toolpath yet with the, a 6mm mil. It's not remembered any of the specific parameters that we set for it. What we could do though is if we found that we were cutting a lot of aluminium at these specific spindle speeds and feed rates and plunge rates is we could actually create our own specific tool in the tool database for uh, actually cutting free machining aluminium. But for this I'm just going to carry on editing this in the edit tool uh, option. So I'm just going to again specify the step over as 1.2 and 3000 for the RPM. The feed rate is going to be of 5 and the plunge rate of 1. So when we've specified all that, let's click OK. You may have noticed that since we actually went back to the drawing tab to measure the point between this vector and this one here, we have actually deselected the vector that we want to profile around. So just make sure that we've got this selected and we can then select where we want to actually machine around our vectors. So I want to make sure that we're machining on the outside of the vector that we've selected and I want to make sure that we've added a ramp into our toolpath. So just make sure that we come to the ramps tab here and we've got this option checked. I'm going to do it in a zigzag motion at a distance of again 16 mil. So just specify that there. I also want to add tabs to this to keep the part in place. So I'm going to go to the tabs tab and then check this option to add tabs to the toolpath. I can then specify the length and the thickness. So I'm going to specify a length of 2 mil, but I'm going to specify the thickness or the height as 8 mil. And then I can click on the edit tabs and this will then allow me to freely just go around with the mouse pointer to add some tabs on the vectors. And we'll see that when we can actually uh, add one as the little tick will come up next to the cursor. So I'm just going to add one there and there and just two in the centre as well. So when we're happy with what we've done we can press close. And I'm just going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this profile cutout. And we can again just calculate that. And we can then preview that on the preview toolpath form. So just select that option. And that'll just preview that for you. As we suspected, it did go into the ball there. So it's always definitely worth uh, using the preview toolpaths to definitely get a good idea of how your toolpath is going to uh, function and what's going to happen during the toolpath. So at this point now, if we're happy with what we see on screen, we can then close the preview toolpath form and we can then think about saving out all the toolpaths that we want to send to the machine. So we just go to the save toolpath option here and we first may want to do the ball nose pocket so we'd then select our post processor and we'd save that out. For our uh, pocket and the holes and the profile cutout they all use the same tool so what we could do is we could output all visible toolpaths to one file and then simply just select these in the order that we actually want to run them, making sure that obviously that our profile cutout would be the last one that we would run, as it as it does run these in the order that you select them. So again you just save that out. Another thing that we may want to do is we actually may want to save a copy of our work. So we obviously if we need to go back and edit any tool pass, we've got the file there straight away. So just come to file and save as I'm just going to save this as Conrad and underscore tool paths and then click save. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.